Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So thanks to the guys over at Hypercharge Unbox, they asked us if we would do a sponsored promotional beginner's guide yeah. for their new game Hypercharge Unbox. And we were like, yeah, it's a decent game, so we don't mind doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, so we've reviewed this game. Uh, we'll put a link to it down below. Um, but this is just to get you started if you're interested in the game. First thing then is the jumping mechanic. Now quite a few people had trouble, didn't they, with this? Yeah, so basically with a first person shooter as this obviously is, you wouldn't necessarily expect to have to jump as much. But this is slightly different in that you are traversing levels looking for good vantage points, uh, looking for the collectibles, the money yep. that you need to collect as well, of course. So you need to get on board with that jumping mechanic early. So the basic, the, the thing to know is that you have a double jump, first yep. of all, um, which you do by tapping the jump button again. And you don't have to take a, a running jump to get no. somewhere, which is kind of maybe one of those mistakes people make and then end up falling off the side. Yeah. So you can jump from a static position, jump once, and then jump again and move the way that you want to move to get to the higher areas. Yeah. Holding down the jump button also, like in many games, will keep you going further. And when you reach a ledge, if you're not holding the button still, it won't pull you up. So you've got to make sure you're still holding that yeah. button down Absolutely. all the way. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about are the different traps that you can use in the game. Now, there's one enemy type in particular that's really annoying. It's like the Beyblade or like the spinner type enemies. Now, the best way to deal with these? So with those, you want to be using your glue weapon, your glue dough. So obviously you pop that on the floor and it will slow them down to a point where you can obviously then deal with them much yeah. more effectively. You can switch out your weapons, or your traps, mm -hmm. I beg your pardon, within your options screen. Yeah. So the first time you may get caught out, but obviously you go back and replay it, you know what's coming. Exactly. You bring the traps with you that will be most effective against those enemy types. Yeah, and with all the different difficulties, maybe you won't need that when you're on like normal or yeah. easy, but when you get to those harder difficulties, it's brutal, oh, isn't it? for sure, and you need those, those traps that are gonna be most effective at those points, yeah. Definitely. Another thing that people don't really realize is that you're defending the hyper cores, but that you can power a shield using a battery. Now, not only can you just place the battery in it, and these randomly spawn around the le levels you play, but you can also throw them. So you hold down, I believe it's the L trigger, and release, and it will throw the battery. You can, if you're good enough, land it into the hyper core, yeah. so you can throw from one side to the other. Have I ever done that? <laughs> no, but I've missed a lot of times. And what else can you do again? You can pass to someone? You can pass them on and uh, a teammate can bring them and, and power up the node for you. Yeah. But yeah, making sure you've got those powered up is essential. They're basically an extra life bar. If you look at the top of the screen where you have your core's mm -hmm. life bar underneath it, there'll be a greyed out battery. Yeah. And if you obviously put that battery in, then that second life bar will kick in. So if the shield gets destroyed and you take damage underneath, that will affect your end game rating. Yes. So it's really important to keep those if you want to get the high scores Absolutely. and better unlocks. So health does not regenerate, something that I think a lot of people expect in games these days. Yep. Um, but there are health pickups scattered about the level. They look like, you know, remember the little jelly cherry the best, sweets? The best sweets you could get. Absolutely. So they're like little cherries and you'll find them about the place. Your health bar, obviously just keep half an eye on it. Maybe wait for a wave to finish, then go and have a look for these health pickups. Just a quick note, you can change the controls to be a little bit more perhaps like you're used to in games like Call of Duty in the, in the controls options. But the thing with the layout here is that it's designed to allow you to shoot, jump, twist, and just basically do everything. Yes. All from the one control Absolutely. set. Absolutely. So you have your jump button is assigned to a shoulder button, yep. therefore giving you space on your, with your hand to get to your fire button and what have you. It does work very well, it just takes a bit of getting used to, does. doesn't it? Just one then on how to find a match with friends mm -hmm. or, or otherwise um, for that point, you have to go to matchmaking. So one person will set the game up. Yep. If you then click on matchmaking and it will find anyone in your vicinity or any friends in your list and you can then join their game. Yeah, and you can set it to just look for friends games. Yes, you can. So you know you're gonna get into their match. Okay, so when you get a bit more into the game and you get a bit better at it, you can actually share the credits that you've got with other players. So if you know each of you's maybe got a specific role or they're gonna be defending a certain area that's gonna require building lots of things, yeah. 
share some of the credits with them. Absolutely. Don't be stingy. <laughs> Again, you can be strategic, can't you? You can yeah. go on a scout about and get your coins. Yeah. You can then hand them over to your friends who's then gonna build that base back up when it's been destroyed mm -hmm. and just get a nice little pattern going. Exactly that. So the guy that can't shoot for toffee sent him off to get cash. <laughs> Absolutely. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> So finally then we're going to talk a bit about communication, obviously mm -hmm. it's a team game, a co-op game. You have voice commands that you can use by holding down the B button yeah. and obviously selecting the one that's relevant to what you want to say. And you can also tap the B button to then set a marker mm -hmm. as to what it is you're saying or where it is you want someone to, to direct their attention. Yeah, this is really useful because obviously you don't have the native voice chat over yeah, a headset. Exactly. It's really useful if you're in charge. So if one, if you put one of you in charge, it's yeah. an area to focus on. So everyone focus your attention here or everyone go here. It's just a useful little visual reminder to the rest of the players. Absolutely. So that's it. Thanks to Hypercharge for sponsoring this video. We hope you found something useful here. Pop any questions down below. Joe from Hypercharge will be down there answering any questions that you've got. Absolutely, have a look at our review if you want to know a bit more about the game. Obviously this is a bit of a basic guide of how to play it, but if yep. you want to know what it's all about, the link will be down below in the top in comment. Big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month, and as always, keep it switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!